Hey everybody, it's Uncle Doug uh, coming to you again. It's uh, 11 o'clock at night. I seem to end up doing videos fairly late, but uh, uh, today is Monday, September 14th. Happy Rosh Hashanah. Uh, it is the Hebrew New Year. Happy New Year. Um, uh, it's also what's been talked about as the Shemitah and people are expecting all kinds of doom and gloom and destruction and a uh, world changing economy stopping stuff and uh, I uh, I gotta tell you I'm not feeling it um, I'm not saying that uh, bad things aren't happening. The stock markets look terrible. Uh, we're probably in for a correction. It could be pretty good sized. Um, but martial law, FEMA camps, Jade Helm in the next few weeks, nah, not feeling it. I know that there's some stuff that the Lord has told us to do and to build. That looks like it'll take a couple of years to get it done and rolled out and in place and whatever. It could be a lot shorter depending on money and help and whatever, but I don't know. I And, and, and they're not things that you could do under martial law kind of shutdown of everything kind of situation. So, uh, And I haven't heard anything from the Lord that we missed it or there's not time to do it or it was a decoy or some other thing. So... I'm uh, uh, still thinking we got time to do some stuff and get some stuff in place that needs to be in place for the uh, end of everything. However, uh, I am getting more and more words from people about the urgency of the hour, the need to get right. Uh, we are seeing people that have been long-term hard cases that are all of a sudden repenting and and uh, God's moving on them, and the many little seeds that were planted are finally bringing forth fruit, uh, long after you might have even given up on them. Uh, Glinda Linkus, uh, dear sweet Glinda, uh, has been talking a, a little while, a couple of words about praying for loved ones, and uh, a grace there for last minute supplication uh, for those that you care about and I would um, I'm doing what I can to repeat and amplify the importance of that the reality that those prayers are seemingly getting heard because people are seemingly uh, getting flipped flipped around uh, not all of them but it's gradual and, and it's happening and we're definitely seeing uh, that uh, those who are obeying, those who are trying hard, those who are keeping their cup full, as it were, uh, are getting uh, a lot of prayers answered in regard to their loved ones. Uh, long-term, long-term prayers. Anyway, so I encourage you that way, and I want to speak some calm to the folks that are going out and empty grocery store shelves and, and, and uh, loading uh, their basement full of drinking water and whatever. And uh, I'm not opposed to preparation. I'm not opposed to people being smart, having being good stewards, having a bug out bag or whatever. But uh, I'm going to go on the record uh, as saying uh, I don't expect any horrendous a meltdown in the United States this September. Um, now, maybe some folks see it as uh, the beginning of something. Well, you know, you go from one birth pang to the next. Every birth pang is the beginning of the badness until the next birth pang. So, if it's the beginning of the next cycle of birth pangs, okay, fine, whatever. But, um, I know he didn't have us get a K for nothing, but I'm also uh, still proceeding with plans to build above ground, to get the greenhouse in place, get it set up as a prayer center and everything else, and 
not an overwhelming urgency to, uh, I don't know, buy a thousand hammocks and cots and whatever. Um, anyway, I, uh, I want to, so I want to speak some peace to some of the folks that are out there that maybe are, 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 are doing what they feel like the Lord is leading them to do by prepping to some degree, but then are watching stuff on YouTube and other people that's, that's winding them up past the point where the Lord said, be smart, and they're into uh, bury yourself in a hole in the ground. Um, chicken little, sky's falling, sky's falling kind of stuff. First of all, we have no reason to panic. Um, we have the Father, Son, the Holy Spirit, and two-thirds of the angels on our side. Uh, as uh, Leonard Ravenhill used to say, what, am I going to sit down and cry? Uh, anyway, so uh, I, I want to encourage you, A, to not worry. There's no instruction in the Bible to worry uh, or panic uh, or doubt that the Lord's got it completely under control and that it's all part of the plan. So, um, that said, um, please be careful who you're listening to on YouTube and on TV and on whatever. There are a lot of people, if you read my book or listen to the audio book called The Red Dragon, The Horrifying Truth About Why the Church Cannot Seem to Change, you'll realize there are all kinds of delusions out there and they're rampant, and they're all over the place. And it is hard, hard to find somebody that hasn't chased something and sort of gone their own way and has some sort of strange fire. It's not just the over-the-top, charismatic, kundalini whatevers. Uh, there's all kinds of strange fire, some of it real subtle, like John MacArthur's strange fire, and uh, other stuff. So, uh, please be careful who you're listening to and realize that the days are evil and that there are all kinds of people with good intentions that are still under a delusion and chasing something they ought not to chase and uh, hearing God with a twist. Um, uh, there were... 2012, we had a whole bunch of people on YouTube. Everything's going to dead end. God told me this is it. Oh, rapture, whatever, whatever, nothing. Uh, 2000, over and over and over, every time some meteor, asteroid, whatever, there's some prophet so-and-so, apostle so-and-so saying this is it. God told me, whatever. Uh... Uh, as in past situations, I'm going to go on the record again and say this this one ain't it. And uh, you ought not to uh, panic. Now, that said, time is short. You need to get right with God. You need to repent of any known sin. You need to get full of the Holy Spirit so that he can empower you to be free from sin in your life. And you really can. God came. Jesus came and died. To save us from our sins. Not just wash them away when we continually sin, but to change our nature, to renew our mind, so that we would have the mind of Christ, so that we wouldn't want to sin and could avoid doing that. Uh, not that you're going to achieve sinless perfection. Not that uh, you won't ever, ever, ever sin. But you ought to be able to walk without willful, intentional sin in your life if you are full of the Holy Spirit. And most people are slightly full to practically not full at all of the Holy Spirit. Um, lots of stuff on our site about how to get your cup so full of Jesus nothing else can fit, and I'd encourage you to watch uh, some of those videos. And uh, um, I, like I said, I think we may see a birth pang that will lead up to the next birth pang, but um, this isn't anywhere close to the um, final solution, end of the ride kind of a situation here. So uh, we got a long ways to go. Uh, this is Rosh Hashanah, the beginning of the, the Hebrew New Year. There's actually three different Hebrew New Years, one of them the New Year for Trees, but we'll talk about that some other time. But this is the main Hebrew New Year. 
And we're leading up into Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, a week or so from now. And uh, you can look on hebcal.com is a good place, H-E-B-C-A-L.com, to get uh, Hebrew calendars and the meaning of the feasts and stuff according to Hebrew ways of thinking. It's not a, it's not a Messianic Christian website. It's actually a Jewish website. But it is informative and helpful. Um, the uh, Day of Atonement is coming up. And uh, I would urge everybody, it's as good a day as any on the calendar, to uh, have squared up everything with everybody. The rabbis believe that uh, the books of the year close on the Day of Atonement, and so you need to have gotten anybody that you hurt or took advantage of or did wrong or anything that uh, you have out there that, or somebody has ought against you, you need to get it cleared up before the Day of Atonement. And uh, so much as uh, it's in you and you're able, I think it's as good a day as any other to make sure that you have squared up with everybody, including God, um, and uh, settled it by, you know, a week or so from now. Um, then we run into the Feast of Trumpets and the Feast of Tabernacles, or the Feast of Booths. Booths, we'll talk about that. We've got some other videos in past years where we've talked about that as well. I believe, uh, uh, well, it's definitely one of the unfulfilled feasts, uh, Passover, where they ate lamb with bitter herbs and put the blood of the lamb on the doorpost and the death angel passed over and didn't hurt anybody that had the blood of the lamb on their doorpost and, and escaped Egypt. That was fulfilled with Jesus, the Passover lamb, put the blood on the doorpost of our heart and the death angel passes over and uh, so on and we escape the world. Pentecost, uh, the first Pentecost being uh, on Sinai when God gave the Torah, gave the law to the people and spoke to everybody and they said, we don't want to hear you anymore, you're too scary. Send a man to talk to us, we'll listen to him. Of course they never do and man's easy to ignore. So he says, I'm going to write their law, my law on their hearts instead of tablets of stone. So the next Pentecost, the fulfillment of that feast, he uh, says the Holy Spirit, and uh, we have available to us all that the apostles and uh, the prophets had available to them. Uh, well, the Feast of Tabernacles is another feast that was instituted by God, not like Hanukkah that's made up later, but is actually in Deuteronomy, and uh, 23, I believe. And uh, he, uh, it's, it's, it's the only feast that we know of in the Minor Prophets, that it says is required during the millennial reign of Jesus, and everybody has to come from everywhere to Jerusalem for the Feast of Tabernacles. I believe it's the Feast of the Bride, celebrating the Bride. The first one's about Jesus, uh, Passover. Pentecost is about the Holy Spirit, and I think Tabernacles is about the Bride. And it's a time for us to uh, remember when Israel lived in booths, tabernacling with the Lord, uh, they built, uh, so that you're supposed to leave your synagogue, leave your house, get out of the boxes, go out behind your house in the lawn and make a little tent, a little uh, uh, lean-to with uh, sticks and twigs and be there for seven days having communion and remembering what it was like for the children of Israel, the children, uh, as the grown-ups all got killed off, and uh, they were led for 40 years through the desert, shoes never wore out, food provided all the time, um, animals didn't miscarry, totally dependent on the Lord. And I think that is where the church is going. Uh, we are going to manifest our oneness when we get out of our boxes, are out under the stars, looking up, seeing the pillar of fire, and the cloud, remembering um, and being those little children for whom everything is provided and trusting the Lord and going wherever he goes. I think um, if you, if I were Jesus during the millennial reign, I would not particularly care about celebrating the feast that's about me. I wouldn't particularly care about celebrating the feast that's about the Holy Spirit. But the one that's about my bride, oh yeah, that one, everybody has to come be a part of. Uh, I can see the heart of Jesus in that. Anyway, 
I do believe the Feast of Tabernacles is important. I've been praying for years that something would happen at the Feast of Tabernacles, that we would see the fulfillment of it. Uh, I pray that it happens this year. I don't know. If it doesn't, it'll be another year where I tiredly look at the Lord and go, what, again? we got to do another one uh, before it's time. But uh, I think it all has to do with people not being ready. I think it has to do with hearts not being prepared, with people not being consecrated, with uh, not having enough people uh, with their... Uh, with the mark of repentance on their forehead, it talks about Ezekiel, that um, that there aren't enough weeping and mourning for the state of things that have uh, committed themselves fully to the Lord. And uh, we're doing what we can here to, to raise up uh, our little handful of those but, um, I don't know. So, if you're hearing me, you understand what I'm talking about. Uh, get, get everything square, please. I'm begging you, please. Settle everything with the Lord. Before Yom Kippur, that'd be great. Before the Feast of Tabernacles. Lay everything down. Submit everything. Offer for him to do anything with you, no matter how much it hurts. Let's get this show on the road. The the remnant, the man child, the the zeal of the Lord, the daughter of Zion, whatever you want to call it, it's got to rise up. And uh, I don't know. I don't know what it looks like. I don't know how it happens. I don't know the mechanics of it. I get hints of it. I know it's important. I know it'll change everything and usher in the end of everything. But I, I can't thus say it the Lord, this is what it's going to look like. Uh, everything I have to say is somewhere between whispers and hints and speculation. And I know better than to teach what I'm not sure the Lord has taught me. So, uh, anyway... Oh, I can tell you, no pre-trib rapture. You don't need to argue with me about it. It's just not going to happen. We need the tribulation to refine the bride. We're going to be here. You need to be ready for it. If you expect to get out of it, tough noogies, you're going to have to be here, and you need to get tougher real fast. And if you think there's a pre-trib rapture, there's a fairly good chance you're not filled with the Holy Spirit, and you're probably a Baptist or some other type that doesn't think that thinks you have all the Holy Spirit you're ever going to get, and I'm telling you, you're wrong, and you need more of the Holy Spirit. You need to find some folks that are sincere, that love the Lord, and that can pray for you to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and uh, you need to start hearing God for yourself all the time and stop listening to your pastor who told you everything be hunky-dory, and it's not going to be. He probably told you the church needed a new gymnasium, too, and it didn't. It needed to care for the poor. Anyway, <clears throat> um... I guess that's about it for me on the Hebrew timeline and uh, updates from here. We're doing everything we can as fast as we can to get ready for the next zoning hearing. But there's a pretty good chance they're going to ask for more of this or, excuse me, more of that and uh, delay it a little bit longer. That's just the way this process goes. But we're trying to get everything we can to shut the mouths and uh, get the show on the road here at the farm. But... Uh, Anyway, um, that's all for now. I want to try and keep this as short as possible and just uh, update y'all. Um, if you were inclined to uh, help with this uh, effort here in Liberty, we could use the help. You can PayPal to FOTM at fellowshipofthemars.com or help at libertydisasterrelief.com. Uh, there's information on the website, fellowshipofthemars.com. Um, where you can mail a check or whatever if you wanted to do that if uh, uh, or send me an email if you need to do a bank transfer from some country that doesn't use PayPal or something like that. We're doing the best we can to put it to good use and to affect the kingdom of God in as big a ways as possible. 
Uh, got to be on TV a couple of times lately. Got a couple of newspaper interviews, one coming up next week. Uh, please pray for me about that. That's for the big the big paper in town, Metro Wide. And uh, uh, got another internet radio show next Friday. Uh, I'll be putting some stuff out about that so you can tune in live if you want to uh, at that time. Um, <clears throat> we're trying to figure out ways to involve you guys more, either some online chat, uh, Google um, room thing, or something where folks from all over can get some help, get some prayer, and we can do it in some kind of live format where lots of people can participate. I'm open to suggestions. Uh, if you like on that. Uh, oh, and I had another idea real quickie. I'm going to do a quick video after this one uh, to help some folks connect uh, where possible. So anyway, um, that's all for now. Thank you. God bless you. Uh, please pray for us as we pray for you. In the name of Jesus, amen.